Hi everyone, in this video we will discuss primary data collection, one of the method, very popular method used by psychologists, projective techniques. And in fact, in management studies also, we are using this particular projective techniques through which we are going to collect our data. So number one, first we have to understand what do you mean by projective techniques? Sometimes we are calling these projective techniques as indirect interviewing techniques. Rather than direct, we are calling it, we can consider it indirect interviewing techniques. That means sometimes we are not asking questions directly, but through some indirective way, we are asking these questions through respondents and we could be able to find correct answer. So in psychology, a projective test is a personality test designed to let a person respond to ambiguous stimuli presumably revealing hidden emotions and internal conflicts projected by the person into the test. So projective techniques that allow respondents to project their subjective or true opinions and belief onto other people or even objects. The respondent's real feelings are then inferred from what he or she says about others. So projective techniques are normally used during the individual or small group interviews. But when we talk about types of projective techniques, there are number of projective techniques are available, right? Here is uh, when we first we will discuss Rorschach's ink blot test and thematic appreciation test. Draw a person test house free person test and uh, basically these techniques if you would see categorized into three parts right and uh, on the basis of which verbal technique expressive techniques word association sentence co co completion all these are the types of projective techniques so word association imaginary associations grouping choice ordering techniques everything that would be part of this projective technique so now, uh, what are the advantages of projective techniques? Advantages are the uh, people are able to express themselves more freely by giving responses to ambiguous stimuli. Psychologists can study subconscious and unconscious mechanisms which can help them understand problems of a normal person or sensitive nature. Sometimes we could not be able to find out those answers those we want but person he is feeling hesitant right they are not able to answer they don't, don't want to disclose so in that case we are using such kind of techniques and uh, one by one we are going to discuss this technique so this is the small description about word association test as it has written right uh, these tests are used to extract information regarding such words which have maximum association so here is sort of test the respondents is asked to mention the first word that comes to mind, right? And uh, without thinking. So at the interview, as the interviewer reads out each word from a list, if the interviewer says, uh, the respondents may say hot and the like ones, like cold and hot. So general technique is to use a list of a many as 50 to 100 words. So analysis of the matching words supplied by the respondents indicates whether the given words should be used for the contemplated purpose and the same idea is exploited in marketing research to find out the quality and is most associated to a brand of a product. So a number of the qualities of a product may be listed and informants may be asked to write brand names possessing one or more these Right. So these techniques are quick and easy to use. And uh, this technique is frequently used in advertising research. Then we come to the next uh, uh, technique under the projective techniques, sentence completion test. So that is also one of the popular method, extension of the techniques of the word association test. In this, may be asked to complete a sentence such as person who wear khadi, R. Right. So dot, dot, dot. So a person who would complete this particular sentence. So that would also the thought process of that person will come out. 
So to find association of the khadi clothes with certain personality characteristic, several sentences of this type might be put to the informant on the same subject. So analysis of replies from the same informant reveals his attitude towards that subject and the combination of these attitudes of all the same sample number sample members in then taken to reflect the views of the population. So here is, but of the idea as well as does help in developing hypothesis and in construction of questionnaires. So this is the sentence completion test. Next, we come to the story completion test. So here is the, this kind of test, the step further where in the researchers may contrive stories instead of sentences and ask the informants to complete them, the respondent is given just enough to story to focus his attention on a given subject and he is asked to supply a conclusion to this story. Then we come to the verbal projection test. Here is the, that is little bit different and this test wherein the respondent is asked to comment on or to explain when, uh, what other people do. For example, why do people smoke? Answer may reveal the respondent's own motivations right then we come to the pictorial techniques that is again a part of this projective techniques so pictorial techniques uh through pictures right we are going to analyze a person so number one is thematic appreciation test here is the tet we are calling it in small form is tet tet consists of a set of pictures some of the pictures deal with the ordinary day-to-day -day events while others may be ambiguous pictures of unusual situations that are shown to respondents who are asked to describe what they think the pictures represent. The replies of respondents constitute the basis for the investigator to draw inference about their personality, picture, structure, attitude, etc. Then the next text is a, a Rosenberg test and this test is used as a cartoon format where and we have a series of cartoons with words inserted in balloons above. The respondent is asked to put his own words in an empty balloon space provided for the purpose in the picture from what the respondents write in the fashion, the study of their attitudes can be made. Then the here is third one is the pictorial technique. Here is here is Rorschach test. This test consists of the 10 cards. Having prints of ink blots, the design happens to be symmetrical but meaningless. And the respondents are asked to describe what they perceive in such symmetrical ink blots. The responses are interpreted on the basis of some predetermined psychological framework. So this test is frequently used, but the problem of validity is still remain a major problem of this test. So we cannot rely on this. We cannot uh, say that these results are valid. Holtzman ink blot test, HIT. So this test from WH Holtzman is a modification of the this particular test that is explained. So this, this test consists of 45 ink blot cards and not 10 ink blots as we find in case of that test, which are based on color movement, shading, and other factors involved in ink blot perception. So only one response per card is obtained from the subject or the respondents. And the responses of a subject are interpreted at three levels of form here is appropriateness. So form responses are interpreted are knowing the accuracy F or inaccuracy of respondents' percepts. Shading and color for ascertaining his affections and emotion, emotional needs, the movement responses for accessing the dynamic aspects of his life. Now the fifth one is again in this the pictorial techniques, Tomkins horn pictures arrangement test. So basically what this test, it is applicable for group administration. It consists of 25 plates, each contains three sketches. 
that may be arranged in a different ways or portrait sequence of events. The respondent is asked to arrange them in a sequence which is considered as response as reasonable. So the responses are interpreted as provided evidence confirming certain norms, respondents, attitude, etc. Then the next uh, uh, next step, next part of pictorial technique is play techniques. In this particular technique, that is asked to improvise or act out a situation in which they have been assigned various roles. The researcher may observe such traits as hostility, dominance, sympathy prejudice or the absence of such traits. So these techniques have been used for knowing the attitudes of younger ones through manipulation of dolls. So dolls representing different racial groups are usually given to children who are allowed to play with them freely. So manner in which children organize dolls who indicate their attitude towards the class of persons represented by dolls. So this is also no, known as doll play test and is used frequently in studies pertaining to sociology. So the choice of the color, form, words, and sense of orderliness and other reactions may provide opportunities to infer deep stated feeling. Then the next one is the pictorial technique. Seventh one is quizzes, test, and examinations. So this is also one of the technique extracting information regarding specific ability, ability of the candidates indirectly. So in this procedure, both long and short questions are framed to test through them the memorizing and analytical ability of the candidates. And then the next one is sociometry. Sociometry is a technique for describing the social relationship among individuals in a group. And that is again, I would say in direct way, the sociometry attempts to describe attractions or repulsion here is between individuals by asking them to indicate whom they would choose or reject in various situations. So sociometry is a new technique of studying the underlying motive, motives of respondents. Under this an attempt is made to trace and the flow of information amongst group and then ex examine the ways in which new ideas are diffused. Sociograms are constructed to identify leaders and followers. And here is sociograms are the charts that depicts the sociometric choice. So they are the many versions of the sociogram pattern and the reader is suggest to consult a specialized reference on sociometry for the purpose. So this approach has been applied to the diffusion of ideas on dr drugs amongst the medical practitioners. The next, again, I would say projective technique, depth interview. So I'm, I'm sure depth interviews, we researcher, we usually apply in our research work. So these are the those interviews that are designed to discover underlying motives and desires and are often used in motivational research. Such interviews are held to explore needs, desire, and feelings of respondents. So in other words, the aim to hear is unconscious as also other types of material relating to especially to personality dynamics and motivations. So that interviews requires great skill on part of the interviewer and at the same time involve considerable time. So unless the researcher has a specialized training, that interview should not be attempted. We should avoid. And this next part of this projective technique, content analysis. So content analysis, that is consists of analyzing the content of documentary materials such as books, magazine, newspapers. The contents of all other verbal materials which can be either spoken or printed. So content analysis prior to 1940s was mostly quantitative analysis of documentary material concerning certain characteristics. Those can be identified and counted. But since 1950s, content analysis is mostly qualitative analysis and concerning the journal import or message of the existing documents. The difference is somewhat like that between a causal interview and depth interviewing. So Bernard, here is the name is often associated with the later type of the content analysis. Content analysis is measurement through proportion. Content analysis measure here is the uh, pervasiveness and that is sometimes as the index of the intensity of the force. 
So this is also one of the, I was trying to show you what is the projective test through pictorial, a person who would interpret this, who will try to find out what's to become of you, right? And all these things. So I'm sure this video would be helpful to you to understand that was entirely focused on that is the one of the topic that is projective technique that the most useful technique in our research so thank you so much keep watching